Redox reactions are very difficult, and particularly the difficult for some people at the beginning to just recognize that you're having a redox reaction. So what I put together here is a list of some common chemicals, and I want to talk about what you would see that would tip you off to say this is going to be a redox reaction. So first of all, uh, anytime I see something with chromium, dichromate, chromate, and then permanganate is also very, very commonly used as a redox. These are all very strong oxidizing agents, and if you look at their formulas, you're seeing a lot of oxygen, and that presence allows them to uh, undergo a reduction that would cause something else to be oxidized. So when I went into my lab, what I did was I pulled out all of my oxidizing agents and reducing agents. Um, I think I actually mostly got oxidizing agents. But ammonium dichromate, uh, any type of dichromate is going to be in there. Uh, potassium chlorate was another chemical I got. Uh, so chlorates would be on that list. Potassium permanganate. Okay. And I also found some potassium chromate. Okay, so yellow color to the potassium chromate, and usually you see kind of an orangish color to the dichromate. Permanganate is purple. Okay, and then I also found some iodine. So iodine is part of the halogen series. So for chlorine, you would have chlorate and perchlorate, but we're going to leave that out. Chlorate, we're going to leave out hypochlorite, chlorine, and chlorine. So any of those can participate. Um, if you're in the middle, you can move in either direction. Uh, per chlorate and perchlorate can only really be reduced down the series, and chlorate can only be oxidized. So something like iodine, you could replace this whole series with iodate and hypoiodite, iodine and iodide. The iodine I have can go in either direction. It can be um, reduced into iodide, or it can also be oxidized uh, into iodate or hypoiodite. Iodite. Um, same thing with bromine. Bromine can turn into bromide, it can turn into hypobromite, it can turn into bromate. So any of the halogen series that looks like this uh, can be used as a redox. And then lastly, a lot of these are oxidizing agents. So what you would usually see with something else is something that's going to be a reducing agent, something that's going to become oxidized. So your metals can do that. Uh, and then also some of the ions are particularly good. Things that have two ions, like iron 2 and iron 3, or tin 2 and tin 4 plus, lead 2, lead 4 plus. Lead 4 plus can only turn into lead 2 or lead. But if you have something like lead 2, it can be reduced to the lead metal. It can also be oxidized into the lead 4 plus. Iron 2 is great for, for doing redox reactions because it can, be, it can be oxidized into iron 3 and it can be reduced into iron metal. So, and of course, any of your metals can undergo that oxidation. Those are just some common ones that are nice because you can use a salt solution. Now, recognizing the chemicals is half the battle. So if you see dichromate, that's a tip that you're probably looking at redox reaction, but you should be careful because there are other ones you can do. For example, solubility. If you saw this with the silver ion, then you need to be wary because that's going to be hinting that you're looking at a precipitation reaction. Okay, But any of these typically will lead you to a redox reaction. The other thing that's important to understand for a redox reaction is, is that's going to occur in solution. And typically it will be acidified or, or it will have base added. Um, so usually when you're balancing these, you're going to balance a redox reaction that's an acidic solution using the fact that you have water molecules available and that you have acid acidic protons available to balance your equation. So these are in the solution already, you can use them in your reaction. If you're in a basic solution, you can use hydroxide ions and you can use water molecules. So if you're reading a question that says this chemical, this chemical in basic solution, that's another tip that you're looking at a redox reaction. So those are the two key elements that you're looking for. You're looking for one of these chemicals that you'll start to recognize with some practice. And then the other tip is that you're looking for something that, that hints at acidic solution, or in the presence of a base, or any language that gives you the indication that you're using those as a balancing component to your redox reaction.